Foreman or with Holyfield. Orland Norris is looking to break into those elite uh, members of the heavyweight division. He's become, for marketability at least, a more of a slugger in recent uh, out, at least it goes for him, and uh, perhaps that'll be to his advantage. Well, if Norris can fight with the Brio, the Elan, and the desire that Terry Norris uh, showed against Curry Saturday night, then we're in for an interesting heavyweight fight. And there is Orland Norris, who is the NABF champion going into this uh, fight. But man, he faces a vast uh, size disparity, which you will see. It'll be very evident to you when we get the referee's instructions. But for now, we'll take a look at the tail of the tape. And you can see a difference in height. <laughs> can, you, uh, can, you, can you think that should be licensed? You look at the guy, six foot five over five foot nine. 235 over 213, 213 is fully closed with Rebox, a Rolex watch, and all the chains he can get on. So <laughs> you know that uh, this should be a mismatch, but you know it's not because of the talent that's involved. And 11 and a half inches difference in a reach. Now as we go into this fight, which is an NABF -a fight, we go by their rules, and the only difference that we have from the previous fights is that the three knockdown rule will be in effect for this fight. So three knockdowns in one round, and the fight will be called at that point. And if you see a young man walking around trying to help his brother with a towel, that is the champion, Terry Norris. And the father, who has also been a boxer, a uh, rather large addition uh, of the Norris family. Norris, Orland Norris told me when he started boxing, he started at 135 pounds. He now weighs 213. That is developing past all classes at meteoric speed. <laughs> well, he and his brother Terry had some pretty good scraps, he told us, when they were youngsters. And he said Terry held his own with him, too. All right, we're just about ready for this NABF heavyweight title fight, so let's go up now for the ring introductions to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, Forum Boxing Incorporated, in association with Caesars Palace, presents our next featured bout, the NABF Heavyweight Championship. This bout is sanctioned by the North American Boxing Federation, the President Bobby Lee, the supervisor in attendance, Dean Loheis, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Presenting the officials as appointed, judging at ringside, we have Bill Graham, Patricia Jarman, Paul Smith, and the referee in charge of this bout, Toby Gibson. All right, fans, here we go. With the big men of boxing, heavyweights in the ring, scheduled 12 rounds for the NABF Heavyweight Championship. Introducing to you first the challenger, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing white trunks with orange and blue trim and hailing from Beverly Hills, California. His weight, 235 pounds. His record, 40 wins, only one defeat with 33 big wins by way of knockout. He is the former IBF heavyweight champion of the world. They call him the Big Oaks Thunder, Tony TNT Tucker. And his opponent across the ring is the defending champion, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring with white trunks and orange trim as he represents First Fighters Squadron in Campo, California. His weight is a ready 213 pounds. His fine record, 29 wins, only two defeats, 15 wins by way of knockout, and he is the NABF heavyweight champion known as Orlin Juice Norris. Here's your referee in charge, Toby Gibson. Okay, I'm going to let both corners know right now since the trunks are where they're at, and I'm considering this a legal punch for both boxers. Gentlemen, I give both your instructions in your respective dressing room. Give me a clean fight inside. Good luck to both of you. All right. Well, it's always been said that a good big man will beat a good little man, and Orland Norris is going to try to put that theory to the test tonight. The other thing is the bigger the man, the bigger the beating. <laughs> No, I, I, I would say one thing before we start. Tony Gibson, the referee, said something I've been waiting all my life to hear a referee say. Because of where the trucks are, he's not going to consider it a low blow if they get hit on that fan. It says Juice and TNT. I've been waiting all my life to hear a referee say that. That's intelligent. If the trunks are too high, it's not a low blow. It's lined up there. 
Well, it's kind of a startling difference when you're at ringside here, when you just come out of a fight with the guys that weigh 108 pounds, and you go up into the heavyweight division, and you see Tucker in there at 235. By, by the way, since the Tyson fight, when he weighed 221, so he's still well above that. Tucker's average, as you alluded to earlier, uh, the 3,246 pounds per fight. You know, the juice, which is the name that they've given Orland Norris, comes from the first fighter squadron. Off of what we're looking at, TNT is from a bomber squad, heavy bomber squad. Look at the size of that's uh, TNT. Tony Tucker. Freddie, would you agree that Tucker is a is a technically is a good uh, technical fighter in the ring? Yes, he had great promise when he started. Him. Unfortunately, he got himself involved with drugs, and that is uh, highly destructive to your reflexes and your ability to fight. He had all the talent to be up there. He could have knocked out Mike Tyson. Uh, if he got himself back to where he was, he would be still a, a contender for, uh, for the title of Tyson. A wild right and then a wild left missing by Orland Norris, who's trying to come in and throw uppercuts against Tony Tucker. And you know, Orland, long range. Orland says it's easier to punch, for me to punch up than for him to punch down. Uh, a bit of boxing logic that I have no idea what it means. <laughs> I wouldn't like to punch up, particularly. Well, when you're 5'9 and fighting as a heavyweight, you invent your own locker. Yeah. Either that or you stay as a body puncher, left with his belly button. Which, by the way, there's been remarkably little body uh, shots here. Not unusual for heavyweights. You always are looking for that one key out of here. That one key that unlocks the door to the knockout. Headshot. Tucker trying to throw the left hook to the body. That'll be difficult for him because Norris, when he started, when he bends to throw that left hook to the body, Norris bends down too and doesn't give him anything to shoot at. There's nothing but those big arms in front of him. He has nothing there. Tucker shooting dynamite, no question about that. He's looking for that right hand, and that right hand lands. There's that uppercut from Orland Norris, and it landed. He's been trying it all around, the fourth or fifth one that he's tried, and it finally got through. <laughs> Tucker's been making the fight. He's not really landing anything effectively, but he's been doing all the punching. Orland Norris apparently just waiting for that one opening. Figuring that the longer it goes, the more it is in his advantage because Tucker tires out. Orland Norris had only nine knockouts in his first 22 fights. He was pretty much a boxer then, but he just felt that he had to change his style to market himself for wanting to be more effective. Boy, Norris is really loading up, missing, but nonetheless, he is throwing bombs. Sunday shots. That's showboating. That's kind of showboating. He missed, and let me tell you, the terrible news is when you miss like that and you get hit in a counter punch, you go down. So he better stop doing that. You tell this guy fine, okay? Uh -huh. We're boxing tonight, all right? Uh -huh. But don't get relaxed on this guy, okay? Okay. Take a deep breath. Now you start out boxing him good, uh -huh. all right? Then you cut your jab off in the middle of the round. Okay. Take a deep breath. Not so good in the middle of the You can beat this guy with one hand. Keep working your jab, okay? Okay. When he's down low, get him off balance with the jab. Get him off balance with the jab, then you'll catch him with one hand. Get him off balance first. All right, let's take a look at some of that action from round one as we get ready for the second round. Watch this counter punch. You know, these two guys are throwing everything they can. Here comes that uppercut because TNT was so exposed. He'd thrown two big shots and he was all off balance. That's what they want. The corner wants all in notice. Jab, watch, wait for it. As far as TNT is concerned, you heard him say, listen. All you got to do is fight a one-handed fight. Just jab, jab, and then turn a hook off the jab. You agree with that? No, absolutely not. God gave you two arms. Defend Jewel Self. With. Well, the trouble for Norris, of course, with his uh, reach disadvantage and height disparity is he needs, he wants to get inside, but Tucker's got a pretty good stick with that jab. Good right hand by Orlando Norris. He got in there with a the jab, and that right hand followed and followed with a hook. No question, he's certainly not intimidated. Orlando Norris is not intimidated by the size and punching ability of Tony Tucker. He's right in his face, he's right in front there. Those thick, cord-like arms up forming a protective barrier. All he's hitting, Tucker, is gloves and forearm. Norris is in his second stint as the NABF champion. He won it recently with the first-round knockout of Lionel Washington. Tucker trying to go to the body again with that left hook. 
Norris has uh, had a couple of impressive victories over opponents with names in the heavyweight division. Ronaldo Snipes a few years back, and also Greg Page he defeated. Oh, nice boxing by, by Norris. Did you see? <laughs> he just kept moving his head, and TNT just missed every punch. That was a nice little smile playing on the face of Orlin Norris. They're just saying, you know, I'm a better boxer than you all. Let me try to hit me. Left hook and then a right hand by Orlin Norris. And he has been able to reach the taller, bigger man. I'm surprised he's not putting more of a jab to the midsection of uh, Tucker. Guys that vary in weight that while they have weak midsections. Fancy damn boxing by heavyweights. It's always nice to see. One thing you must also consider tonight in terms of Tony Tucker is he's 32 years old. You don't normally associate him with being an aging fighter, 